Hello everyone, welcome to our next GS tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about binary search tree. My name is Shohruk Bek and I'm going to follow you through this presentation alongside implementation of binary search tree. So we're going to analyze main operations, search insertion and deletion. We're going to analyze each of them separately Firstly, we're going to analyze the concept and then we will implement it in C++. So let's start with search function. Firstly, let me tell you that in binary search tree, all the values are inserted to the left subtree if the value of the new node is less than the, its parent's value. And if it's bigger than its parent's value, it's going to be inserted to the right subtree. For example, as you can see, 15 is a root node, and all the values which are less than 50 are going to be inserted, are uh, inserted actually, in the left subtree. And the values in the right subtree are bigger than 50. And this application applies to each node which has children. For example, 10 has a left subtree, and in the left subtree, the values are less than 10. In the right subtree, the values of the nodes there's only one node actually, and it's bigger than its parent's node. Okay, it's bigger than 10. So algorithm is pretty simple. If you want to find any kind of node, you firstly compare its value, I mean the value target, let's say, to the value of a node. And if it's bigger than the value of the node, you go to the right subtree, okay? As you can see, if target's bigger than the value of the node, you go to the right subtree. Because as you know, the values at the right subtree are bigger than node's value, and the target is bigger than node's value, that means you can find, that means you can or you may find the target in the right subtree. There's no point of going to the left subtree because the target is bigger than the value of the node and in left subtree we have the values less than the node of the value okay but we need the value that's bigger than the node's value so in this case the bigger than 15 because we are searching for 16 okay then uh if the value i mean the target is less than the value or let's say the value of the node is bigger than the target you go to the left subtree so again here you go to left subtree because 18 is bigger than 16 and once you found the key the node you stop so you will stop either when the node is found or when the node is null that means you can't when you can't find the node with a given value with a given target you reach a null ptr and when you reach null ptr that means nothing is found to stop there so there are two conditions when your algorithm stops so let's see the implementation in c actually in this case i've written the code beforehand but you know, to save some time, but I also added some comments, so they're pretty well written, so you can read these comments and rewatch this video and also understand the implementation. But the main task, the main objective is to understand the concept and try to implement all of this by yourself and check your implementation with this source code. So our function returns string turns true if we find successful the target, the node. If it turns false, that means it we met no PTR. We couldn't find the node. So as you can see, if current is no PTR, return false. If current equals target, return true. That means the node has the value of target. That means we have found the node successfully. So if the current data is bigger than target, that means target is less than the value of the node. That means we should try to search in the left subtree. So else, else block is executed when data is less than target. That means target has a bigger value than the value of the node. And in this case, we should try to search in the right subtree because the values of the nodes in the right subtree are bigger than the value of data. So that means there is a possibility that we can find this value I mean, the target in the right subtree. So that's why we pass this current right. As you can see, this implementation is a recursive implementation. We return the outcome of this, I mean, this function call. If this function calls, for example, returns false, again, we return false. 
If it's true, there is untrue. I think it's pretty understandable. So let's now move to the next function. And this function is going to be insertion. The algorithm is almost identical as in searching. The very first thing that we do is to find out free node, empty node, let's say no PTR. And why? We want to insert our new node in that position, in empty node. So in order to find out empty node, we use the same algorithm, the same logic as in searching. So firstly, you search a new node, okay? So in searching, you search for a particular value, but here in insertion, you firstly find out the search for, let's say, empty node. So while searching empty node, you compare the values uh, with the value of our new node. For example, if you want to in insert 16, I mean, imagine that 16 is not the part of binary search tree. If you want to insert 16, that means you compare this 16 new node's value with a given, I mean, existing values in the binary search tree, and then comparing this 16, comparing the node's value with new node's value, you find out empty node. For example, there's no need, for example, uh, to tell me that the each left child is uh, no PTR, so there is empty node, so we we'll have to insert 16 here. No, 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 no. We have to follow the definition of binary search tree, okay? New nodes value should be in the correct position. So in order to place it in correct position, we have to compare its new nodes value, its existing values, and then find empty nodes. For example, our new nodes value is 16, so it's bigger than 15, so we go to the right, it's less than 20, go to the left, and it's less than 18, we go to the left, bingo, empty node, empty node, I mean, no PTR, I mean, 18 has no left child, so that means we have to place this 16 right here. It should be left child of 18, okay? So, as you can see, firstly, search a null node using the same logic as in search and function. Just don't uh, keep in mind the definition of binary search tree. Go to the left, right, compare the new node's value with existing values, and then find new node. I mean, position of new node. It's initially null PTR, null node. So then just insert new new value there. So the function is pretty identical as in searching. So we use this tree, I mean, temp node. Uh, we are calling everything by reference. So as you can see, we're passing this uh, PTR by reference. So for example, if value, I mean, value of node existing node is bigger than, uh, no, it's not existing node, it's a new, new value, okay? It's value of a new node that's going to be, inserted a little bit later, okay, is bigger than tree data, we're going to search for no PTR in the right subtree, else we're going to search no PTR in the left subtree. And once we reach this condition, when tree is no PTR, then we allocate new node into this tree, actually this was actually no PTR, no node, then we're allocating the new node here with a value, for example, 16, and then we are setting its right and left child to the null because branch new node doesn't have any kind of child right. So that's it. Uh, just pretty simple, right? So yeah. So let's move to the deletion part. Okay, uh, in deletion, we have three cases. The very first case when the node has no child children, that means you the node that we're going to delete doesn't have any children. In the second case, the node has two children. In the third case, the node has only one children, child. So let's first consider the brand new one, case number one. Okay. So if you want to delete the node that doesn't have any children, actually the node that, that doesn't have any children is called leaf node. If you want to delete leaf node, just uh, update or set parents, its parents left or right child to null. For example, in this case, we want to delete 18, right? 18's parent is 20, and 20, I mean, a left child is 18. So 18 is a left child of its parent. So if you want to delete this 18, we have to set, we have to update 20's left child to null, because actually it was pointing to 18, but 
after deletion of 18, it should point to null, okay? So 18 is a left child of its parent, so logic to delete 18 is to update parent left to null. So let's see implementation. Um, okay, uh, what, what we're doing here, the parent, we're creating a variable for current, uh, <clears throat> passing the current um, root to the current, and what we're doing, we are searching by reference the current and parent. We're passing the value of the node that we want to delete, and this function just uh, assigns to the current by reference the node that has a value, this value, I mean the given value, and it also sets its parent to this parent variable, okay? So if this current, if the node with given value doesn't exist, we should stop execution here. If the node with given key is not found, then node doesn't exist. So case number one, if a node that will be deleted has no children, leave node, okay? That means current left is no, that means current left doesn't exist. I mean, no PTR and uh, current next is no PTR. Then if current is not root, I mean, if the node that we're going to delete is not the root, then we set parents left to no PTR. If node was the left child, if it was a right child with parents, I mean, we set parents right to no PTR, okay? If parent left no current, then updated no PTR, else update right child of parent to no PTR. Okay, else if current is actually root, that means if there is only one root node, then we set it to no, okay? Root should be no, that means we delete the only element and there's no element, that means the root should point to the no. So let's consider case number two. In this case, we want to delete the node which has two child. For example, let's consider we want to delete 20 and it has two child, okay? So <clears throat> the very first thing that you do, is we have to find its predecessor. Predecessor means the node that comes right before this node in in order traverse. For example, if you make in order traverse, firstly comes a 19 and then comes 20, right? So first of all, we find this in order predecessor. That means the node before the this node, I mean the node that comes before the node that we want to delete. Before this comes 19 in, in order traverse. Then we delete this in order predecessor. I mean we delete this in order predecessor. And we update the node's value with the value of in order predecessor. As you can see here, 19 comes here, and we are deleting 19 here, okay? And why we are doing this approach? Because while making in order traverse, just ignore the 20, okay? After 15, if there's no 20, comes 18, I mean 16, then 18, then 19, then 13. So if you want to delete the node that has two child, we should do the logic so that the the logic of the implementation of traverse doesn't change, okay? So if you, I mean, find the inner predecessor and delete it and update the node's value with the value of inner predecessor and then make uh, traverse, in order traverse, you can see that the logic will be, I mean, the value of inner traverse will be the same as in this part when we ignored this 20, okay? So that means the logic is correct, okay? So I repeat, step one, find in order predecessor. So in order predecessor is always in the left subtree, okay? Because uh, the node that comes right before the node that we want to delete comes in the left subtree. And it's going to be the maximum of, I mean, the maximum element, the maximum node in the left subtree, okay? So in order predecessor, this is in order predecessor. Then we delete this in order predecessor, and then the replace the value of the node that we want to delete with the value of in order predecessor, okay? So this is actually in our final we also delete the current, right? So I mean in the case one. So this is a case two, and the node to be deleted has two children. So firstly we find in order predecessor. So, so find max node. So we are passing current left. We are passing left sub three because the in order predecessor always I mean exists in the left sub three, right? Because the node that comes before the node in in order traverse is in the left subtree. 
So <clears throat> this function returns, I mean, we are passing current on the left, left subtree, and this returns the maximum node, the predecessor of the node, of the given node. So then we store predecessor value in some, uh, in called, well called integer variable, and then we recursively delete the predecessor. So in this case, we are passing again the left subtree, and we are passing the value. So that means we are passing this left subtree and we are passing the wall. The wall is predecessor wall. So in, in this case, our predecessor is 19. So we are passing to delete function this left subtree and the value 19. That means we want to delete in the left subtree this 19. So after the 19 predecessor is deleted, so then we copy value of predecessor to the current node. So that means we replace this 20. As soon as this 19 predecessor is deleted, we replace this node's value with the value of the deleted predecessor. So current data equals to the wall. So finally, we have this scenario. Hope it's pretty understandable, right? We recursively delete the predecessor, okay? So just know it, okay? Keep in mind. I mean, there's no need to write delete current because this statement here recursively deletes predecessor. So if you have any kind of questions, just feel free to ask in the comment section or just write us, okay? And hopefully everything is going well and you're following everything. So finally, let's consider case number three when the node has only one child. As you can see, that means the node has only one child means that it has either left child or right child. Okay, if it has a left child, it's a right child is null. If it has a right child, that means it's left child is null. For example, we want to delete 25, but it has only one child and it's going to be, it is actually right child. So the left child of this node is null. So if you want to delete the node with one child, you just update parents left or right child to the node's child. For example, in this case, the parent of 25 is going to be 20, right? So code in order to delete this 25 node is going to be just update parent right or left node to the node's child. For example, in this case, this node is actually, uh, sorry for the noise, um, for inconvenience, okay, just try to follow me. So if this 25, I mean, the 25 is the right child of the parent, right? So that means if you want to delete 25, we update 20, the parent's right child, to the node's child. In this case, node's child is node white, okay? So then, as you can see, 20 will not point to 25, so point, I mean, 20's right child will point to 30, okay? So let's see the implementation here. Case number three, node to be delete only has one child. So we are choosing the child. For example, that means it's a ternary operation. So if this Boolean expression is true, child is assigned, I mean, current left is assigned to a child. If not, current right is assigned, okay? For example, if current left exists, child is going to be current left, nodes left. I mean, if it, I mean, if it has only, if it has left child, that means there's no right child. So our child is going to be nodes left. If it's not true, I mean, if it doesn't have any left child, it has right child, okay? Sorry for noise, okay? Just follow me. So, child is assigned, we have child. So, if the current, the node we're going to delete is not the root, we check. If parent's left is the node that we want to delete, we update parent left to child. If parent else, okay, that means if it's not true, that means parent right is node, okay? In this case, I mean... Parents white is the node, is the current 25. Then we update parent white to child. In this case, our child was nodes white. So that means parent white, this 20s white is going to be nodes white. Actually, this is a child. Okay. Yeah, child. So, okay, if it current, I mean, if the node wasn't root, but if it's root, so we just uh set the root to the child okay just imagine that 15 i mean 15 doesn't have any left subtree it has only right subtree and you want to delete 15 so your root will be 20 right because there's no nothing in the left subtree the root will be 20 okay 
you will assign the root to the child of 15 and it has only one child okay so this is what we have done here so then finally you deallocate the memory you delete the note that you want to delete actually in this case 25 so this is done uh, i'm going to share the source code with you okay uh there's also this uh, utility function so actually let's uh okay let's run this program this test program so in order to traverse, we had this one, three, four, six, nine. For example, actually our node was six. Okay, nine is going to be inserted to the right. One is going to be inserted to the left. Four is going to be inserted to the left because it's less than the root, okay? And three is going to be inserted to the left. So we have one, three, four, six, nine. And the value to search, for example, is seven. That doesn't exist. So value is in the list, false correct and the value that we want to delete let's say we want to delete root six so we have one three four nine everything is done correctly okay so you can study uh, on your own this code but anyway firstly just analyze these concepts and try to implement the logic yourself okay try to implement the logic yourself and then check the source code so these are useful links. Please just read the overview of the tree. There you can find all of your information about the um, implementation, the logic, the complexities of trees, binary tree, binary search tree. And in this video, you can find the brief explanation of the concept of BST, binary search tree. Okay. So this is a reference. We use this website in order to get the photos illustrated by the search tree anyways this was the end of our tutorial if you have any kind of questions just feel free to ask in the comment section with you today there was Shafrok Deja Shoyev and hopefully we're gonna meet each other soon in our next DS tutorials thank you